Good morning, everybody. You never know when you're sat at the front just how many people are joining you behind, and it's really lovely to see a full lady chapel. We undenard about which uh, which um, which setting to use this morning, and I'm glad we went for the lady chapel because it's just a nice number in here. Yes, and also we have got our people at home because this service will be going out at four o'clock for those who haven't been able to join. Uh, an in-person service over Christmas. And because it's Sunday today, uh, it is nice to put Church at Four out uh, today as well. So um, you can always watch it again at four o'clock if you wish. So you should have your communion booklet, your carols, and uh, your welcome. And yes, Christmas has started proper now, so we really do need our carols. So a happy Christmas to all of you wherever you're watching this from, and for those of you who have been able to join us this morning. The Lord be with you. God in Christ has revealed his glory. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the Lord's name is greatly to be praised. Give him praise, you servants of the Lord, and praise the name of the Lord. So we are going to stand to sing our first carol this Boxing Day. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see.
our own faults and failings. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light those things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and against one another, in thought and word and deed. We are truly sorry for our pride and for our lack of faith, of understanding and of love. We repent of our narrow-mindedness, of our bitterness and our prejudices. Pardon and forgive us, save us and renew us, that we might delight in your will and walk in your ways. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. prayer for this, the first Sunday of Christmas, but also Boxing Day. Gracious Father, who gave the first martyr Stephen grace to pray for those who took up stones against him, grant that in all our sufferings for the truth, we may learn to love even our enemies and to seek forgiveness for those who desire our hurt, looking up to heaven to him who was crucified for us. Jesus Christ, our mediator and advocate, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please do sit for our first reading. First reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7. Stephen said to the high priest and council, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you are ever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to do. 
when the when the prophets did your when the prophets did your ancestors not persecute which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute they killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one and now you have become his betrayers and murderers you are the ones that receive the law as ordained by the angels and yet you have not kept it when they heard these things they became enraged and ground their teeth at Stephen Stephen filled with the Holy Spirit gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God look he said I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God they but they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed against him then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him and the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul while they were stoning Stephen he prayed Lord Jesus receive my spirit then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice Lord do not behold this sin against them when he had said that he died and this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew glory, glory to you O Lord. Lord our reading is from Matthew chapter 10 beginning at verse 17 Jesus summoned the twelve and sent them out with the following instruction. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to those and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at the time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and the father his children, and children will raise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat. So yes, since Stephen's Day, or Boxing Day, and I thought it might be a good idea to remind ourselves of the story of Stephen, who he was, and how he became the first Christian martyr. Martyr means witness. And as we follow Stephen's story, we'll remember that he was the first Christian whose witness to Jesus brought about his death, not on a cross, but as we heard, with stones and rock. Stephen's story, remembered every year on this well-known day, is relatively unknown. So let's see if there's anything in it for us today. In the early life of the Christian church, all the followers of Jesus would have attended temple. And they are taught by the twelve apostles, and they break bread and they pray together. Now, those who had owned property and possessions would have sold what they had and everything would have been held for the good of all people according to their needs. But it isn't long before a dispute arises over the distribution of the food. Now, there were two groups of Jews in Jerusalem at the time. The first were the Palestinian Jews. They would have been born in in Palestine and would have spoken Aramaic. The second were known as the Hellenists, and they spoke Greek as their first or possibly second language. And they came from countries surrounding Palestine. In other words, they would have been considered immigrants. And it seems 
that the Hellenist widows were not being given a fair share of the food when it was distributed. So representatives from the Hellenists go to the Twelve Apostles and tell them about this so that it can be put right. The Apostles say that they themselves mustn't be distracted from their work of teaching and preaching and praying, and they suggest that the Hellenists appoint from among themselves seven men full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom to sort this out and to ensure that the food is distributed fairly and equally. And this is when we meet Stephen for the first time. He and Philip are two of the seven. But we don't really hear anything else about the others apart from their names. And we hear no more about the dispute over the distribution of food. The story in Acts, though, that continues with Stephen's ministry. And we are told that he is full of grace and full of power and that he performs great signs and wonders. He's also an evangelist. And unlike the apostles, well, he travels outside the area of the temple and out of Jerusalem. He goes out teaching and preaching in synagogues where the, Greeks are Jew uh, the Jews are Greek speaking and speak with a power and authority that cannot be denied by them. Stephen upsets these people in the synagogues and they are accusing him of blasphemy. Now they take him before the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem and they set up false witnesses who claim that Stephen has said that Jesus will destroy the temple and do away with the law of Moses. Not dissimilar to the false, prof the false witnesses that were set up against Jesus as well. Now Stephen himself, he remained silent when charges were brought against him. That, sorry, that should have said Jesus there, because that's why I was talking about Jesus, if you remember, remained silent when charges were brought against him. But Stephen in Acts, well, he responds slightly differently. Stephen, he launches into a long and powerful speech, but not in his defence. He actually starts accusing the people of Israel of idolatry and blasphemy themselves. And the speech, if you read it in Acts, actually goes on for 53 verses, and that's in chapter 7. Stephen's speech talks of Abraham, of Jacob and Joseph and Moses and he says that the people of Israel have always been disobedient to God. That they've worshipped idols and shrines having been built to them. And they've not kept, he says, the law of Moses, which they would have held and revered very much. He also says, that they've always rejected and persecuted leaders and prophets who have been chosen by God to save his people. And he finishes by calling them stiff-necked, inflexible people who've done the same as their ancestors did and that they've killed the Messiah. The speech, of course, is inflammatory and it enrages the Sanhedrin and the others that are listening to him. And this is the point at which our readings in Acts begin this morning. Stephen looks up and declares that he can see the heavens opened and he can see Jesus, the Son of Man, standing at God's right hand. That is the last straw. All hell breaks loose and Stephen is dragged off, thrown into a pit and stoned. And this would have been a very cruel punishment, and I would imagine a terrible way to die. Stephen again follows the ways of Jesus when he commends his own spirit to God, just as Jesus did. Father, he says, into your hands I commend my spirit. And remarkably, he too forgives his tormentors. 
Jesus, uh, Lord, do not hold these sins against them. And then we are told at the end of our reading today that he dies. And that is the story of Stephen. But you know, it holds the seeds for at least two other stories which are about to begin. First of all, this triggers a fierce persecution of the followers of Jesus, which results in arrests and imprisonment for many. It also sends the followers of Jesus out of Jerusalem to far off places where they too begin to preach and teach the good news. And so the church begins to spread. And secondly, we just hear his name at the end of our Acts reading. There's a young man called Saul who guards the coats of the people throwing the stones and who approves of this type of execution. And as we know, Saul becomes a particularly ferocious persecutor of Christians until he travels along the road to Damascus and then becomes Paul, as we know. And he takes this gospel even farer and wider, preaching not just to Jews, but also to the Gentiles. So perhaps it was Stephen and his assurance of faith, his words, his vision, and his willingness to forgive his enemies, his complete commitment to following Jesus, the way, the truth, and the light who sparked off in Saul the thought that maybe, just maybe, Jesus was the true Messiah. But as is often the case when we look at the life of a saint, it can encourage us to take a look at our own lives. So maybe Stephen's story too can help us reflect. Are there things about the early church that we can learn from? Does it say anything about how we can use our gifts? And does it lead us to question anything about what we believe? And I will leave you with those reflections. Amen. So let's stand together as we affirm our faith in God with the creed on page 7. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please do sit or kneel for our time of prayer together. Our prayer response can be found inside our welcomes. When I say incarnate God, please respond, we love you and we need you. So let us pray to the God who travels with us in all our celebrations and tragedies and understands what it is like to be human. As we celebrate Christmas, when the word of God became flesh, we pray for the church, the body of Christ, and may we be so filled with God's loving life 
that our actions touch the world with hope, which lasts even when the Christmas decorations are put away. Incarnate God, we love you and we need you. As the world is reminded of love and peace in the words of our carols, may the reality of a God who loves us so much transform our social and political thinking and energise our plans and negotiations. We pray especially at this time for all our leaders, for those leading countries as they go through difficult times, as they go through tragedies as well as celebrations. We especially remember the Philippines at this time. Incarnate God, we love you and we need you. As Christmas brings together family members and friends, as we meet up and contact those that we may not have seen for a long time, make all our relationships stronger. Embed them in love and forgiveness and help us to value one another more. Incarnate God, we love you and we need you. And we remember all those who have been forced to escape from their homes and live without security. For immigrants and refugees, for all those who have no place to call home and for those who have had no choice but to leave their home behind. And we especially think of those with young children who are homeless or are in danger. Incarnate God, we love you and we need you. We pray for those that we know who are sick at this time, those who are named in our welcome, those who are known only to ourselves, and those who have no one to pray for them. We also pray for those whose earthly journey has come to an end, and those who have tended them during their dying, we pray for those who have died through violence and for those who have much to forgive. Incarnate God, we love you and we need you. Lord, we recognise our great need of your grace and give you thanks and praise for making it possible what would otherwise be impossible. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's stand together to share peace. Christ came and proclaimed the Gospel. Peace to those who are far off and peace to those who are near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Do offer one another a sign of peace.
Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So as our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and shared your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. So let us pray. Merciful Lord, we thank you for the signs of your mercy revealed in birth and death. Save us by the coming of your Son. Give us joy in honouring Stephen, first martyr of the new Israel, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We turn back to our orders of service and we say the prayer of thanksgiving at the bottom of page 10. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be the living sacrifice, set aside in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God rest you, Mary, gentlemen, let nothing you dismay, for Jesus Christ our Savior.
to certain shepherds brought tidings of the same how that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name oh tidings of comfort and joy comfort and joy oh tidings of comfort and joy Shepherds at those tidings rejoice in much in mind and left their flocks a feeding in tempest, storm, and wind and went to Bethlehem straightway the blessed babe to find. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. final blessing upon you all this wonderful Boxing Day. May Christ draw you to humility and worship and bring you to see God at work and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with you all, not just this Christmas time, but always. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Amen.